Just as a PSA to start off this video, we won't be showing off any story spoilers, even though we're talking about Endgame, but we will be showing off modes like the Proving Grounds and a few early game bosses played on Mayhem mode, just to give you an example on what the Endgame Mayhem mode is actually like. So if you don't want to see that, click off this video. Borderlands 3 is finally out, and with it, the final embargo has gone down which means that I can talk a little bit about Endgame. I'm not going to spoil too much for you, but I definitely just want to let you know what's ahead of you once you start leveling in Borderlands. And it's actually really clever how Gearbox have made it so the whole of Borderlands becomes the Endgame. I'll explain it as we go along. Before we talk about the peri-peri sauce that goes on top of the Borderlands Endgame meal, we need to talk about the other pieces of chicken that have been added in. The latest Borderlands is all of the stuff that old Borderlands games had. Side missions boss runs that you can do over and over again, places that you can farm, but you also have a new edition of the Circle of Slaughter, or at least an updated version. Like you've seen on screen, it's basically the same. Hard mode, you fighting against waves of enemies over and over again, see how long that you can last, but we have the brand new piece of Proving Grounds. This is very similar to Digistruck Peak, where you have to sort of rush through this gauntlet, killing every single enemy that you come across, go to the next area, do it again, get to a boss at the end, kill them, and then get the loot chest. Job's done. But as you've seen on the right hand side, you also have these extra parameters that you could try and do in order to up the rarity of the loot chest right at the end. These might include not dying whilst doing the Proving Grounds, doing it in a certain amount of time, and also killing the Fallen Guardian, which appears randomly along the way. There's a lot of replayability, even just doing one of the Proving Grounds over and over to try and do it as fast as possible, try out different builds, try out different guns, really to see how efficient you can be and how much you could just completely destroy the enemies. Much like I'm doing here on Melee Amara. But there are six Proving Grounds in total which you need to go out into the world and find. Don't worry, there is a guide on how to do that coming out probably later today. But this is one of the coolest additions that Borderlands has added. But you might be thinking, is that it for Endgame? That doesn't seem like much. We need to speak about the main aspect that makes all of this content difficult, challenging, but most of all rewarding. And with me talking about Mayhem Mode comes some pretty controversial advice. Try and complete the campaign as fast as you can. Now I know some people want to take their time, do every side quest, every crew challenge, complete every zone 100% before you move on. I'm not going to tell you to do anything differently. Like you paid the money for the game, you play it in whatever way you want. If you want to stop and smell the roses, do it. We've waited quite a while for a new Borderlands game. However, there are reasons as to why I suggest trying to beat the campaign as soon as possible. Three in total, the first one is the introduction of Mayhem Mode. You unlock this endgame feature not at level 50, which is the maximum level cap, but as soon as you beat the campaign, which can be as early as like level 32. And this is the torment level playstyle that is added on top of your Borderlands experience. You have three modes that you can choose from, Mayhem 1, 2 and 3, and each of these modes become more difficult, add certain challenges, but also increase the experience, the money, and most importantly, the rare loot that you can get. The idea is to work your way to the highest mayhem mode of free to farm the best loot in the game. And much like the torment levels in Diablo, it affects everything that you want to do, including the side missions that you may have wanted to do as you were leveling. Let's use this as an example. We have a side mission here on Pandora that's like level five to eight. You are about to finish the campaign and you are level 35. You can't go back to Pandora to do those missions. It's pointless because all of the enemies that you will be fighting will be around level eight. They won't scale up to you. They won't give you enough experience and they're not gonna give you any good loot. And if they do, it's gonna be down at level eight, making it kind of pointless. However, as soon as you activate Mayhem Mode 1, like you're seeing on screen, these level one skags are now the same level as I am in the gameplay because everything scales up to whatever level you're at once you activate mayhem mode which means if you save all of those side missions because you were too busy doing the campaign you could do those to level all the way to 50 and not to mention all of the gear that you get from doing those side missions are tailored to your level meaning it's a lot more worthwhile any legendaries that you get along the way will also be scaled up to your level i use the example of doing side missions for this but you could do the circle of slaughter as soon as you do the campaign you could just level to 50 by doing this over and over again mr tog would love you you could do the proving grounds the side missions and the other bits and pieces that makes borderlands borderlands 
one key aspect of previous Borderlands games was farming loot, specifically farming bosses. Most of you have seen this boss before. This is Mouthpiece. You've probably killed him already at this point if you have been playing. He's like a level 10 boss very early on in the game, the first real boss that you come across. After you kill him and complete those missions, you will be able to go back to that zone to farm him. And without Mayhem mode, there is an element of scaling, but as you can see, he's level 34 in the gameplay. All of the mobs were level 30, so they've hit a cap they can't go beyond that, and I'm of course level 39. I didn't get Mouthpiece's Legendary, which we can talk about in a second, but all of the gear that did drop was obviously a couple of levels below, making it kinda useless for me. Let's compare that to the Mayhem Mode gameplay where all of the mobs are my level, even Mouthpiece is a level above me and is a lot tougher to take down. But better yet, that Legendary that he drops, dropped level 40 and also with Anointed Pieces. So the chance of getting anointed gear goes up and the strength of all of that gear matches your level. Get to level 50, this is a great way to get some early game legendaries and I would definitely recommend getting this one for sure. So you fight through all of these enemies that are at your level that are much more difficult to take down so you need really good weapons and builds to be able to break on through. You come across this early game boss that's at your level, you kill him, but he doesn't drop the legendary that you want. So what could you do? Well, you just quit out, go back into the game and you found the boss again and again and again and again. You could get to max level after completing the campaign by farming the first boss in the game. How cool is that? And every gear piece that he drops is appropriate for you. Yes, you can even farm the last boss in the game if you wanted to. Another key aspect of Mayhem mode is the random affixes that you can have added into your game. You go into Mayhem 1, you load into Pandora, you will have these random perks on the right hand side that might make elemental damage stronger than physical damage, might just ruin the damage that your weapons do by making it worse, but increase the damage that your abilities do, forcing you to do them more, giving you a couple of challenges that you need to face along the way. In Mayhem mode 1, you have one affix that's randomly added into your game. Mayhem 2, it goes up to 3. And Mayhem 3, you have 5 affixes. The higher you go as well, some other different mods do sort of unlock, I suppose, to make the game a lot harder. So to just sort of recap, once you beat the campaign, you unlock Mayhem mode, which will turn everything that you've been doing, boss runs, side missions, just farming enemies. It will make it more difficult, scale it to your level, and improve the rewards that you're getting. You can even do the new game modes, which are Proving Grounds and Circle of Slaughter, on these difficulty modes, if you fancy doing something that isn't just running around Pandora or Promethea or Athena. But there is another thing that you can do, and that is the true Vault Hunter mode. And once you complete the campaign, you can play for it all again at what Whatever level you finished on, the enemies are scaled to you, much more difficult to take down, but provide you better rewards. So if you really enjoyed the story and want to play it again, definitely do a true Vault Hunter mode playthrough. Of course, when you complete the campaign on true Vault Hunter mode, by this point you're probably level 50, I'd be surprised if not, you could do Mayhem mode in true Vault Hunter mode. So you have difficulty stacked on difficulty, which I think is where the true end game is. That's like torment level 15 that people may be working towards. And you bet that's where you're going to get the best loot. Basically, here's a diagram on screen. You have the normal mode playthrough and all of the stuff that you could do in there. Once you're in there, you can add the mayhem levels on top of your normal mode playthrough, or you can go onto true Vault Hunter mode, complete the campaign there, and do the mayhem levels in there instead. And I've listed all of the stuff that you could do in the game, which becomes end game. But there's yet even more when it comes to end game. And this is important as it's another thing that you unlock once you beat the campaign for the first time, which is account wide. These are guardian ranks. This is like the badass rank system in Borderlands 2 with a few changes. You don't unlock the tokens by doing random achievements or random challenges by killing a certain amount of bullymongs. It becomes a Paragon level, which you gain XP for alongside the normal levels. As you've seen on screen, I have the normal leveling bar in the middle and then the pink bar on top. Everything that you do will give you XP and you will constantly keep leveling up your Guardian rank to infinity. It's worth adding that this also is account wide. You beat the campaign on let's say Zane, when you do your level 1 Amara run or your Moes, you will have all your guardian ranks unlocked in the stats that you dedicated them to. So you unlock it when you complete the campaign and you gain these tokens by just leveling up normally. But Ryan I hear you ask, how does it actually work? Well, these are my stats on across my account. I don't know why I have minus 41 points. I guess they changed something server side, which has meant that I maybe have too many points. So it's trying to make sure that I don't go crazy with it. But when you gain a guardian rank, you get a token that you can redeem. And you are given the option of six things that you can dedicate points into, two from each tree. So say for example, we get to rank 68. 
I'm given the option to increase my critical damage, my melee damage, my maximum health, my shield recharge delay, my accuracy, or my luck. As you can see, I've dedicated a lot of points to luck. Basically, every time it's come up, I've dedicated points because I want to get as much awesome gear as possible. The more points you put in though, the more of a diminishing return there is. For example, it starts off as a base stat. I know that I've only put one token into shield recharge rate, but the more points you put in, the more you start running into 1.93, 2.8. It goes on and on and on to the point where it's not really worth dedicating any more points to luck because I might put a token into there that might only give me 0.15% increase. It's not worth it. That's the same as Borderlands 2. So if you know how that system works, then good. That's nothing's really changed there. The interesting aspect of it is the right hand side here. You are given the option between the three trees that stuff is in, so you can pick whatever stats. But let's say luck comes up as a stat that I want to put a token into, I click it, it adds a token onto this side. I know I've put 76 tokens into all of these stats because each time I put a token in, you start to unlock stuff as you go down the tree. For example, if you just put 10 tokens in, so your first 10 guardian rank levels, you put them all into Hunter, you unlock a weapon skin. But as you go down, you start to unlock some pretty strong talents that are really nice passives. Not a game changing, but they're more quality of life things. For example, ammo pickups providing 15% extra ammo, regenerating a grenade every 10 kills. Action skill cooldown rate increases while at full shield. That's why I can get my abilities back in like 4 seconds by the way. And you could sort of pick and choose which talents you want to sort of dedicate to. It just gives you something else to chase. This isn't the true end game, but it's a nice thing on top when it comes to mayhem mode and also true vault hunter. Something else that I guess rewards you for playing and has no cap at all. So Mayhem Mode, Guardian Ranks, True Vault Hunter Mode, Boss Battles, Privy Ground, Circle of Slaughter, Side Missions, Crew Challenges, all becomes end game once you unlock all of these bits and pieces. Not to mention that we have these takedown raid things coming in the future, as well as other forms of DLC. We're not going to be bored anytime soon playing Borderlands, because even if we get all of the stuff we want on one character, we have another three Vault Hunters to play. But as they say, ain't no rest for the wicked, am I right? Thanks for watching this video, I hope you learned everything that you needed to know about Endgame. Hope you had a lot of fun enjoying it as well. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and enjoy playing the Borderlands 3. Take care, see you soon.